So today we're going to talk about something we see everywhere. In fact, if you walk outside and look down, you'll probably see a few of those critters moving around. So we're talking about ants. And today I have with me Jennifer Gordon, who's a urban and medical entomologist with Bug Lessons Consulting. Jennifer, welcome to the program once again. Hey, Jeff. So what do we do with ants in the workplace, especially? You know, in the home, it's one thing, but when they show up in the office, I did a little research. Now, I'm no expert about bugs, but when it comes to ants, a um, lot of words for them, a lot of different types of ants. We'll talk about that. But I came across this reference that said they're a social insect. Now, social means hanging out at bars, going to tea parties, being with people. Not for ants, though. Yeah, uh, we entomologists, we definitely have a, a lot of words that we like to use with each other. You know, it really helps us communicate very precisely and clearly. But if you don't speak our language, it can definitely sound like gibberish. Uh, I've run into that a, a little bit. And uh, no, social insects doesn't mean that you're going to run into to ants at, at tea parties and bars. But, you know, if you're not careful and you're not lucky, you, you could actually encounter some of them. But ants are, are really interesting, but they are the most important structural and urban pest, and they can be very difficult to control. But just to kind of talk about the wonder that is ants, you know, let's talk about what a social insect is for a minute. For an entomologist, a social insect is a very specific type of insect. And examples are certainly ants, termites, um, some aphids, bees, and wasps. But to be a social insect, they have to have four characteristics. The first one is overlapping generations. So basically all that means is that you're gonna have different insects of different ages living together. And this is very similar to people. You know, Think about it, we have baby boomers, Gen X, millennials, Gen Ys. Another characteristic that a social insect has to have is that not all individuals reproduce. So social insects generally have one or very few queens that lay the eggs, but her daughters, generally speaking, don't reproduce. And these daughters are the ones who are performing the tasks around the nest. And that actually leads us into the third characteristic, which is division of labor. So in social insects, each individual is going to perform a different job. You're going to have workers, soldiers, and food finders. And then finally that nest, you know, social insects create a nest where they can all live. And sometimes they create these nests outside in the environment, you know, think about like a beehive or sometimes they can be located within things such as inside of the, the ground or in a tree. Ants are, are, are very pesky as we're gonna talk about soon, but they can be very interesting. Who knew what social meant? Um, but that's a good explanation. My first official question then would be how many types of ants are there and are some of them more concerned than others? Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. And the answer is there's tons of them. Uh, globally, you know, there's over 12,000 different species and every single one of them are social. Within the United States and Canada, there's about 700 different species, but very few of them are pests. You know, about 25 are, are going to infest homes. And some of these pests can be very aggravating. You can find them on your kitchen counters or, or even destroying wood if it's a carpenter ant. However, some of the pest ants can be much more concerning, such as the red imported fire ant, which you can find in the Southern United States. Red imported fire ant stings can be very dangerous. And if you do encounter them, you should take care whenever you find these fire ants. Yeah, uh, we've seen them in the movies and documentaries. Um, the, the sting is painful, but it can be venomous as well. Yeah, absolutely. They can sting you and they inject venom. And another kind of interesting thing is when a red imported fire ant stings, it releases a pheromone. And a pheromone is just a chemical that different ants use to speak to one another. So once one stings, if you've got others around you, it triggers them to all sting at one time. That doesn't sound very pleasant. It's not. <laughs> I was playing frisbee golf once and I accidentally came upon a, a few of them and I didn't mean to, but I sure realized it real quick. So we could come across these more often than we might think. Sometimes, yeah, especially in the South where they're, they're pretty common. Okay, so let's talk about homes and buildings. What makes an ant come inside? What attracts them? That's a great question. 
Ants will exploit almost any situation that has moisture, can provide shelter, uh, or and or has food. Now, ants will eat a lot of different things, but generally speaking, the ants that are making their way into homes and buildings, they're looking for either sweets or proteins, depending on the type of ants. And when we see them in buildings, generally what has happened is a forager ant or an ant whose job it is to leave the nest and find resources has made its way into the building. It's laid down another one of those chemical trails that they use to communicate with and other ants have then followed that trail to the resource that they want. So if an ant gets in your house and finds those proteins or sweet, I guess, food droppings or some, some source, uh, do they go back to the nest and they communicate? You mentioned the trail they leave. It's, how does that work? Yeah, it's called a, 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 tra a pheromone trail. So yeah. they're actually leaving a visible, an invisible trail along the surface, and they're detecting that chemical and following it back and forth. So you can kind of think about it like if you're hiking, you know, we see physical trails and the ants aren't using their eyes. They're using chemicals to follow that trail instead. Okay. So they're, they're not getting lost. They know where they've been and they know where the food is and it's in your house or your building, perhaps your break room and a facility. Good information. Okay. Now I've seen a few in my home and only a few now and then, but what if you see one, does that mean there's more? Should we, we be worried about that? Uh, not necessarily, but, but maybe. You know, you might have run into that initial scout that is, you know, going out trying to find food and hasn't, you know, reported back to the nest yet. But more than likely where there's one, there could be several, you know, you're going to see them potentially walking in those lines. And those are the ants that are following that chemical trail that we just talked about. And this is because, as I said, this is how ants communicate with these, you know, invisible chemical cues. Yeah, well, the ones I did see, I, they got squashed, but... <laughs> I didn't let nothing, them go back to the nest. Absolutely. Nothing better than a thumb. Yeah. Well, good, good information. So we see them in the house or the facility. How do we get rid of them? Is it as easy as just buying some bug spray? No, I mean, that is the million dollar question. Ants can be very difficult to get rid of. And this is where, you know, you're going to hear me talk about what we talked about last time, where that relationship with a pest management professional is going to be really important. Uh, additionally, though, proper education and training staff is going to be really important to eliminate what ants are looking for and to prevent ants from coming in. So a facility or a homeowner may be able to stop the ant infestation with a little bit of knowledge without having to contact a professional, but these ants can be very challenging and often they do require a professional. But to try to sum up how to get rid of ants kind of quicker, easily, you know, it's a, a multi-step process. So the first step is properly identifying that ant species again. Ants can look very similar, especially the workers, but different species can require very different tactics. So it's important to know exactly what species of ant you're dealing with. You need to locate the nest. You know, it's important to know where all of the ants are coming from because you need to be able to treat that nest in some way to eliminate the source. Excluding the ants becomes very important. Figuring out where they're coming in from and putting a stop to it. Caulk is important. Door sweeps. It could be a little bit more complicated. If you've got damage to a foundation, you might actually have to contact some kind of a general contractor. Treating the perimeter. Again, this is going to be something that is definitely best done by a professional. You want to make sure that you are properly licensed and have all of the requirements of a state to treat with insecticides. However, there are some products labeled for consumer use. But the idea here is that you're either going to kill or repel the ants that are outside before they're coming into the building. You definitely want to reduce that food source. Whatever is making those ants come in, you want to try to get rid of that. And food sources can be things that we might think of that are obvious, such as dinner or food out on the counter. It could be garbage, pet food, stored products, um, you know, think of anything that a, a, an ant might want. And it might not be something you can see, it might've fallen behind something. But there can be some really interesting food sources too. Again, garbage on the outside, it could be fungus, and sometimes even other insects can be a food source that ants are trying to exploit. 
uh, applying insecticides uh, in, on the enzyme. Again, this is something that's gonna be best done by a professional, but the idea is to kill the ants that you're seeing. Baits, baits are gonna be, you know, the number one, probably most effective form of control. Again, you know, best done by a professional, but there are several great consumer products that can be purchased over the counter. The idea with the bait is that you're creating something that is attractive to the ant, it's picking it up and it's bringing it back to the colony and feeding it to the young. So you're eliminating the source that way. Baits can take a little bit longer to work, but when used appropriately and following all label directions can be very effective. And then finally, you know, all the other methods. So this can be sanitation. You know, we've talked a little bit about trail pheromones. You can actually clean those up with different over-the-counter products. You can basically wipe out their trail. Removing attractive food sources, as we've discussed, cleaning up counters, plants can sometimes be attractive. You can get other insects such as aphids that are on the plants and they produce a sweet substance that ants really like or the ants might actually be using the, the plant as a harborage, fixing cracks and crevices around the facility, cleaning up things around the perimeter. Things like trees and bushes might be touching and they might not be harming the building, but they're basically creating bridges for the ants to gain access to your building that way. Eliminating moisture is gonna be really critical and, and a lot of other just general building maintenance uh, facility projects to, to keep the ants out. And again, making sure you have that relationship with a pest management professional and properly training your staff will really help you to eliminate and prevent future ant infestations. Let me follow up with this question. So if you see them in your building or your home, you mentioned their nest and, and ridding them. Is the, is the, could that be in the building or do they typically just come back and forth? And how long does it take to set up a nest? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, how long does it take to set up a nest? That's going to depend again on the ant species that you're dealing with. And it could be inside, it could be outside. You never know. So finding the nest really is, is critical. Yeah. Um, I know that when I see them in my house, it's like a red or a black ant. I, it's all I know. So I suppose determining what type of ant it is, we'll take a professional. Absolutely. A uh, professional, somebody who works with ants, who has the proper equipment, often you need microscopes to really be able to see the characteristics that you're looking for to identify that ant. Okay. My final question is, let's talk about public health. You have ants in your building or in the home. What does that mean for the health of those in the building or the home? Sure. The answer to this is it's really going to depend on that ant. When I think about ants and the impacts they have on people, stings automatically do come up. You know, some ants have stingers, very few of them are probably going to want to sting and inject venom, but other ants will, you know, we're thinking again about those red imported fire ants. You really have to be careful with them. Their stings can be very severe. They can leave welts, pustules. They can cause really severe allergic reactions and in very rare instances, death. Um, ants can make food unsuitable for human consumption. You know, they may or may not be able to physically spread pathogens just by sheer moving. But if you open up your sugar jar and there's full of ants, you know, chances are you're going to throw away that sugar. So if you've got like a big source of food and there's ants covering it, you know, it's probably not going to be good for, for people anymore. Damaging the structural integrity of a building. You know, not all ants can do this, but some can. Carpenter ants can, can really damage the structural integrity of a building and that combined with the moisture that's probably led to the, the carpenter ants getting in there. And if you don't have shelter, that certainly affects people. And then stress, you know, entomophobia is real. And while logically we may know that insects are nothing to worry about, emotionally they can be really stressful and I totally get it. I love insects but they can still absolutely give me the heebie-jeebies depending on what they are or where I find them. And you know, I do wanna take a quick moment and say that while all of this sounds very scary, if you see an ant in your home or your facility, there is no need to panic. You know, Contact your pest management professional to help them solve your problem and then create a training program to really educate your staff so that people know what they're looking for and how to prevent a future infestation. Because it's kind of like the, the saying goes, an ounce of prevention really is worth a pound of cure. Thank you.